Welcome back everybody. For six months, my wife and I traveled in this Lance 1172 truck camper. And one of the most common questions we got asked was how do you put it on and off the truck? And today we're gonna show you how that process works. One of our favorite parts of traveling in a truck camper is the ability to take it on and off the truck. This allows us to be small and nimble, but still have the flexibility of being able to drop the camper, have a home base similar to a fifth wheel or travel trailer. This also allows us to use the truck with its full capabilities, go off-roading, and be even more nimble than with the truck camper on it. In our six months of traveling in this, we took it off about a dozen times for various reasons and love the versatility. So let's show you how it's done. So we're gonna start assuming that the truck camper is already on the truck. The first thing that we're gonna need to do is find our campsite, and the more level, the better. While truck campers can be leveled once off the truck, having a dip under one of the legs or having to level it too much puts additional stress on the camper, so we prefer to attempt to level the truck before taking it off. We utilize the truck's onboard level detection system, but additional sensors or bubble levels can work as well. If it's not possible to get perfectly level, the last bit can be done once the truck camper is off. When selecting your spot, be cognizant of where the jacks are going to land. Make sure that they're not in a big hole or dip or have a big rock underneath them. You can also think about utilizing some wood or pads to put underneath the jacks, depending on the surface type. Once the final spot where the truck camper is going to be dropped has been selected and the camper has been leveled, the next step is to remove the tie downs from the truck camper and truck mounting brackets. This is going to differ on each truck camper model, but most of the time the mounting bracket is on the underside of the truck camper, and the truck will have mounting brackets that stick out from the sides and or the hitch on the back. The tie downs themselves come in many different forms, including chains, turnbuckles, and what we're using on this camper called the fast gun. These are spring-loaded turnbuckles that after removing the safety pin, pop up and can be easily removed from the RV and truck. Be careful when removing them so they don't swing into the truck and dent or scratch it. Truck camper jacks come in a variety of types, primarily electric or manual. The jacks on this RV are electric jacks, but can be manually driven by a drill or hand crank. Depending on the truck camper type, the jacks are either going to be designed for a dually truck or a single rear wheel truck. On dually trucks, because the back of the truck is so wide, the jacks need to be swung out so that the truck will be able to drive out from underneath the RV. So now comes the point where we actually lift the camper off the truck and each manufacturer is gonna differ a bit in how this is done. But this camper utilizes a wireless remote control that we can actually individually control each jack or control them all at the same time. We're gonna start by pressing the all up button, which actually is going to lift the camper, but lower the jacks. And we're gonna watch each individual jack to make sure that they all touch at the same time. When the first jack touches, we're gonna to stop controlling them all and individually make sure they're all on the ground before we start lifting them all at the same time so that they're all even. On electric models, the jacks might lower at slightly different times, so it's critical to stop occasionally and make sure that all the jacks are pressing into the ground at the same time, and each individual jack can be controlled individually to put pressure back down if it's moving faster or slower than the rest. Before removing the truck, be sure to disconnect anything else that may obstruct its movement. In our case, the bike rack attached to the truck's hitch. Once all the jacks are firmly on the ground, press the all up button to lift the camper up off the truck. Raise the camper until it lifts up off the suspension and out of the bed of the truck. Electric jacks also use a lot of power and some truck campers may need to be plugged in or have the truck running to run the jacks properly. This heavy RV used 550 watts to lift the unit. Once the truck camper is lifted high enough that the truck can drive out from underneath it, it's a good idea to note the height. Many truck camper jacks have level indications on them, or you can mark it on the jack. With the truck camper lifted, it's now time to drive out from underneath it. All right, it is now time to just pull away from the truck camper. Uh, we've got it all lifted off. You wanna make sure your tires are nice and straight because you're just gonna pull straight out 
and it should be fine. Uh, it's great if you do have somebody else to watch it, make sure that everything's looking good. You wanna watch that truck camper and make sure that nothing's catching. You're not pulling it with you. You also have to remember that you have a plug that needs to be unplugged for the power. So we're gonna just pull a little ways forward and then unplug everything. You ready? After pulling forward only a foot or two, it's time to unplug the truck camper. Truck campers connect to the truck for electrical power and lighting, and this needs to be unplugged. Some of these plugs run to the back of the truck, and some of them are plugged in in the bed itself, as is the case in this camper. All right, with everything unplugged, we can just pull away. and we're free. Now that we're off the truck, the camper is pretty darn high because we had to lift it way off the truck. And because of that, with all the really kind of narrow legs, it's actually kind of wobbly. I can just push it around like this. So we lower it as low as we can go to the ground to maximize stability for getting in and out. And it really, really firms it up. As we lower it, we need to make sure that all the legs lower at the same time because one motor may be a little faster than the other. You may notice that one will come off the ground and it can teeter a little bit. So watch it as you lower it to the ground. And if you see one that's starting to go faster than the other ones, stop and make sure that that one's pressing into the ground so that it's a nice, even movement of the entire camper. The truck camper can be lowered as long as nothing is obstructing it. And in the case of this camper, just until the steps near the ground. Once lowered, the truck camper is ready to use. Or if you have slides, now you can put them out. With a truck camper with slides, be sure that the jacks didn't settle or slide after taking it off the truck, as this can cause the truck camper to torque and bind the slides. When it's time to put the camper back on, it's just a matter of reversing the process. First, pull the slides in and raise the camper back to the position that you noted when you raised it off the bed of the truck. With the camper raised up, line the truck up with the camper. So when putting the camper back on, it is imperative that you align it perfectly straight. You're gonna watch the bed of the truck, you're gonna watch the sides of the truck camper, and basically you just back it up without knocking it over. You wanna make sure the truck is lined up with the center of the bed to the center of the truck camper. Some people find it helpful to put a piece of tape down the center of the bed of the truck and a piece of tape at the center of the truck camper to line them up. The first couple times it's gonna feel very tight as there's only inches to spare, but once you're used to it, it's very doable. Move very slowly as you back up underneath the truck camper. And if you find yourself getting near or binding to one side, stop, pull forward, and restart. Once the truck camper is a couple feet from the cab, stop and plug it in again. Also make sure it's aligned properly and not off to one side or the other too much. With it plugged back in, slowly back the truck up until the camper bumpers line up with the front of the truck bed. And stop. Start lowering the camper a bit to see how it's going to rest. And at this point, you may need to move the truck back or forward a few inches to get the perfect fit. Perfect, we're good. Once it's lined up properly, lower the truck camper onto the bed of the truck and onto the truck suspension. We like to raise the jacks all the way up to help prevent dirt buildup and keep them cleaner. Once the jacks are all the way up, it's time to reattach the tie downs. As the position of the truck camper may have shifted slightly, the tie down's tightness may need to be readjusted. With the fast gun tie downs, they screw in and out. And as they are spring loaded to find the proper tension, you want to connect them and snap the turnbuckle down, making sure that the spring extends about a quarter inch. At this point, you should be ready to roll. Initially, this process took us about 20 minutes to take the truck camper on and off. But with practice, we are now able to do it in about five to 10 minutes. So as you can see, with a little bit of practice, taking a truck camper on and off can be a pretty easy, smooth process. If you're interested in seeing where we have traveled in this truck camper, check out our Go North series, where we traveled through Canada and Alaska in it. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you all next time.